Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. While we're waiting for more people to join and to start, if you want to write in the chat where you're tuning in from. We'll get started in a few minutes. We'll be working off of a source sheet today that has an outline for the webinar, and I'm going to share that in the chat. So feel free to open that source sheet and take a look at what you might expect to get out of this. like we have people from all across the United States. We have someone in London, England, New York, Denver, Vegas, Massachusetts, Florida. Thank you for joining us. If you've just joined, please let us know where you're tuning in from in the chat and feel free to open this source sheet that we'll be working from today. We're just waiting for some more people to join. We'll start in a few minutes. If you're just joining us, go ahead and put in the chat where you're coming, where you're joining us from. And feel free to open this source sheet that we'll be working from today. Um, is the source sheet downloadable? You can export source sheets um, from Safari to Google Drive. Um, we won't be going over how to do that today. Uh, but it should be, you should be able to open the sheet on both your laptop and the Safari app, but most of what we'll be going over today applies to the website, um, not the app. Having problems finding the link to that sheet. I'm going to share it again in the chat. And I'll share it once again right before we get started so that everyone who joins can see it. If you've just joined us, feel free to share in the chat where you're joining from and we'll get started in just a couple minutes. And I'm seeing we have some people in Israel joining us. 
Minnesota, Delaware, Illinois, all across the United States. We've got some folks in Canada, Vancouver and Toronto. Is it possible to make the source sheet bigger? Big, uh, like a bigger font or it's really hard for those of us who are older 70 or I'll speak for myself. I can barely see it. If you're opening the source sheet on your own um, computer through the link that I'm sharing, uh, you can go ahead and zoom it there. If you click, um, I believe on the A Olive button there, um, it allows you to make the font size larger. Can we look at it on, on a new tab which comes up and still be on this webinar? Yes, absolutely. At the top of the screen, it says view options. If you click on that, it gives you different options to, to enlarge the. In the that case, this lady, what is it? Um, Ayan Sands, you can use control plus to make it bigger as well. The control key and the plus key. And is there a way for us to uh, print this for ourselves? Uh, yes, absolutely. You can print. Um, we won't be going over too many source sheet um, things today. Um, we do have a separate webinar to go over source sheets because there's so much to cover. Um, but this link will be available um, for everyone um, and it'll always be there. We'll email it to you after the webinar with a recording as well. Um, okay, and we're going to get started in just a minute now, and I'm just going to ask that everyone um, continue to stay muted. If you have questions, please add them to the chat. Um, and I am going to uh, introduce Rachel, our education associate, and we'll go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel, and you've been talking to Chava Tzemach, who is our communications and marketing manager, and we're going to be doing this together. Um, I'm going to be presenting, and uh, we'll be stopping along the way uh, to answer the questions, and Chava will ask me the questions that you have put in the chat. Um, you have that, the sheet open. You might want to also have a tab open on our Safari website, because uh, you can be playing along as I'm doing it. I'm going to share my screen in a minute and we're going to be on the Safaria website. This is Safaria 101, uh, where we're going to be showing you lots of cool new things and old things about Safaria. Um, and so I am going to share my screen, but I'm going to show you a different screen than before. You have the sheet and in a minute, I am going to show you uh, the Safaria homepage. And we're gonna start here. And again, you might wanna have a tab open. And as Chava mentioned, we're going to be talking about the website, which is www.safaria.org. If you, we also have a Hebrew website, um, if you're in Israel and would prefer to do it in Hebrew, you can do that. Um, and I noticed like looking at all of their places that people are from, it realized that I've lived in many of them or have family members in them. I'm in Jerusalem right now. And um, so I'm happy to have all of you here. Um, so at Safario, we're building an extensive library of Jewish texts and the tools to go with it. We have been around for about seven years and we keep growing. In fact, April was a record-breaking month when 464,000 individual users visited Safaria. Today, we're gonna go on a guided tour of Safaria and we're gonna be the basics, features that you might not be aware of. So some of you have been using Safari for a while, but you might not know all of the things that you can do with it. And we have some brand new features that I'd like to show you. Um, and again, as Chava said, we showed you a source sheet. We are gonna talk a little bit about source sheets. We are not gonna talk about how to make a source sheet or format a source sheet, because that's just a very large topic. And, um, so it really needs two different sessions. Um, and if you're interested in, um, in a source sheet making webinar, you could put it in the chat 
or also um, I'll show you later how you can check and see what our up and coming uh, webinars are and social media is definitely one place for that. Um, I'm going to also I want to mention that I am on the website and you can do this on your app. It's going to look a little bit different and the, here and there there are things that are very different and I will uh, be pointing those out to you. Um, of course, when you actually get started, you'll want some support because I know when I attend webinars like this, it all seems very clear when someone else is doing it. And then, and then when I'm sitting in front of the screen, I have questions. So we have a few things on that source sheet that you can um, click on that will help you. One is our helpline, which is help at, at uh, no, not help, it's hello at safaria.org. You can always write us there. We'll get back to you as quickly as possible. And we have a new group of, of um, FAQs. And actually those of you who are asking about sheets, how to print your sheet, how to do, make them bigger, all those things, you will find that in the FAQ group and there's a link to it on your sheet um, so that you could take a quick peek there. Um, and again, if you're interested in follow-up webinars, please, please let us know, but let's get started. So, the experience of learning Torah on Safari is enriched by the ability to click on a click of a mouse. You can dig deeper and deeper into text. So I'd like to start with opening text. There are several ways that you can open a text. Um, we're going to start with the situation where I know what text I'm interested in. So if I want to do that, I can click on the search bar, which on the top left of the screen, um, on every single screen, there is a search bar with a little magnifying glass and it says search. If I click on that bar, first of all, to the right, you'll notice that there is a little keyboard icon. And if I click on that, I have a Hebrew uh, keyboard. The search is available in Hebrew or in English. You can type, if you on your computer type in Hebrew, you can just type in Hebrew, you can type in English. If you don't have Hebrew typing on your computer, you can use the keyboard. I'm going to start with a text that I know. I'm going to write it in. I'm going to write numbers. I'm just typing it in. Numbers, six, chapter 16, verse 1. This is the configuration that we use, 16 with a colon and a 1. And then I'm going to press enter. And it takes me right away to, um, to the text. And as you see, it says Korach because this is the Torah portion if you are not living in Israel. This is this week's Torah portion. Um, uh, it, right now, it's showing me in Hebrew, in English, but um, if I click on the top right on the A Aleph button, which uh, we did a second ago while we were waiting, um, this is a really important button to know about. This is also on every single text in our library, we have the A Aleph button. If we click on that, then um, I can choose my language. So if I click the A, like now it's all English. If I click the Aleph, it will show me the text all in Hebrew. If I click the A Aleph, it will be a bilingual text. If I'm in bilingual, I have choices of layout. The way it is um, now, how you see it, is what we call stacked, where it has the Hebrew and then the English below it. We have two choices of side by side. I'm going to show you one of them. If I click next to here, I have the he and this is the English on the right, the Hebrew on the left. Um, the other choice is the other way. So I can always choose how I want to view in our library. I'm going to click the A Aleph again and show you here's the font size on the left. The little font will make it smaller. The bigger font will make it bigger. Um, because I'm in the Torah, there are also a choice to have it viewed with the Aliyot marked with the, uh, for the Torah reading. So I have it marked as yes, I could toggle it off. In a minute, I'll show you what that looks like. And I also have a choice of how I want the letters displayed. Do I want just the letters? Do I want the middle one in vocalization has, has the letter with the vowel and the left one has the letter with the vowel and the trope. So I can decide for different purposes, which ones I want. So here I'm gonna show it with everything, with the um, vowels and the trope. And I have Aliot on. And now you can see, well, here, the first one, it doesn't say the first Aliyah because we're at the beginning of the Torah reading. But if I scroll down here, it says second. This is where the second Aliyah shows. If I had toggled it off, there would be nothing there. So again, this obviously is a choice only for the Torah readings. 
Um, so that's the basic. I'm going to put it back to I always prefer stacked, so I'm going to change it back. Um, just a personal preference. Um, so, so that is one way of finding the text, simply typing it into the search bar. Another way I can do it is, and this is for if I want the Parsha, I want this week's Torah portion. Now I'm going to do the one that I'm going to be hearing this week in Israel. I'm just going to type the name of the Parsha in the bar, and it's Chukat in Israel this week. And so I'm just going to type it and press enter, and there it took me to the Parsha of, uh, it'll be outside of Israel, you'll be there next week. So that's the second way. Um, but now it starts to get, this is where the fun begins. So now I have the text, I can read it, I can scroll. But if I click on the text itself, I open the side panel. If you're on your app, it's going to open it below. If it, you're on the website, it's going to open it to the right. If you're on the Hebrew app website, it will open it on the left. And this is where the advantage of having a digitized text that's all interlinked comes to play. So on the resource panel on the right, we have all of our categories, which I'm going to show you later, but commentary, Targum, Mishnah, Talmud, all of the categories. And it has every text that is connected to the text that I chose. So let's probably easiest to conceptualize this with commentary. First of all, you see that we have 183 commentaries just on this verse alone. So I'm going to click on commentary and it will open it up for me. And now I see the first four are just the most popular commentaries, Rashi, Ibn Ezra, Ramban, and Sforno. We put those at the top since those are the ones that people are looking at probably first. And then we have all the other commentaries that we have in alphabetical order. So, um, so it makes it easier to find them. You will notice a few things before I open it up and show you. Um, first of all, you'll notice that some of them are in a, in a dark um, text, in, in black, and some are in gray. So the black ones mean that that commentator who we have in our library had something to say about this verse. So if you look, um, we're in the gray here on the side, Dad's Kenim is in gray because they did not comment on this verse. We want you to know that we have that text, but this way you, you know that we have it, but he had nothing to say. Some people had a lot to say on this text, on this verse. So the Chatam Sofer, he had seven comments on it. Um, so that is, will tell you that if you see the EN on the side, and this is also something that right now is only on the website, that indicates that we have a complete English translation for that text. So Rashi, we have a complete English Torah commentary translation. So um, if you're only looking for something that has an English translation, you, can, you don't have to be clicking around and looking to see you'll know right away because it's indicated with the EN. So I'm going to click on Rashi. And now I'm going to see in the side panel, it happens to come up in English right now. Um, I'm going to see those three comments that Rashi had on this verse that I had clicked on. If I'd like to change it to Hebrew, I go up to the top, in the top right, and click the Aleph. And now I've changed it to, to Hebrew. And I can click back and forth. Um, but Maybe I would like to see it. You can tell that this isn't in the full library view because then I would have a choice to have it bilingual. If I click on Rashi, I'm going to click on this first one. And now I have it side by side with the Torah text. I have the Rashi commentary and I can see all of them on this. And I, can, I have the whole book open. Uh, it's like having the book right next to me. Uh, so, and now you see that I have the A Aleph in the top right. And so I can, now I can view it however I like. Um, so now I have my second uh, text. So I have the text from the Torah. I have the Rashi uh, commentary, but it doesn't end there. I can click on Rashi and now I'm getting it at everything that is connected to the Rashi. So this is a, what's called a super commentary. It's a commentary on Rashi, and there are six of them, and some of them are even in English. I could open one of those. I also 
could open, if you notice back in the Rashi, you can see in Hebrew or in English that he quoted the Talmud. So here we see it's connected because we have the Talmud. We have a Hebrew English Talmud. In fact, we have the Steinsaltz Talmud in Hebrew and in English. So I can click on that. And now I will see what Rashi quoted in his comment. And so in the old days when you had to go and your teacher would say, oh, there's only a little bit of it here. You need to see it in context. I can put it with a click. I can put it in context next to me. And again, this is in English. I could make it in Hebrew. But if I click on the Talmud text, now I have the Talmud in its entirety. Rashi only put a little bit, but maybe that wasn't enough for me. I want to see it in context. And I can scroll through here and see the full Talmud text. I can keep going on this as long as my screen allows me. On the website, on the app, you, you open them one at a time. And of course, that's due to the size of the screen on your phone. You couldn't be doing this. If you're a teacher and you're in a classroom and you have a smart board, um, you have a huge space and you could open and open. So I could open this and now I have the commentary on the Talmud. I can close by Xing out in the top right of any text. Okay, so that is the real magic of what's, uh, what's going on on Safari, that everything is connected. I'd like to show you another thing. Let's say I click on here and I want to open Rashi and I look at the Rashi and now I want to open, um, I'd like to open the Sforno. So I click on Sforno and you can see on the top here, I have a Sforno tag, tab and I have a Rashi tab. So without having to go back and forth, I could click on Rashi and now I can see what Rashi has to say. I can click on Sforno. I go back to the Sforno. And if I go back, I can keep opening as many of these as I would like. Here's Chiz Kuni. And now I have three tabs and I can keep opening them. Um, so just to recap what we've done, we typed in the source that we wanted. We opened it up and then we saw all of the connections and we could go as esoteric as you want, as, as uh, deep as you want, and keep going. But let's look at other ways to find a text that, let's say, I know the text that I would like. So another very important uh, button on every single screen in Safari is on the top left, these three horizontal lines, which are sometimes called the hamburger. Um, if I click on the hamburger, I go to the Safari library page. This is like if you walk into our library and we have, um, we have shelves and we have categories and we have all of the Tanakh, all of the Tanakh, all the books of the, of the Bible. We have all the commentators. They're all on the Tanakh shelf. We have the Mishnah on the Mishnah shelf with its commentators. This is how it's organized. So see here we have, and everything's color coded. Um, and if I click more, I have more categories. These are all of our categories. So let's say I would like to open the first chapter of Pirkei Avot, which is actually in Mishnah. So I'm gonna click on Mishnah. And now I see all of the books in, in Mishnah that I have, all of the different tractates. And if I go further down, you will see that I also have all of the commentaries. Uh, but right now I'm gonna open, I wanna open Pirkei Avot, which is a tractate in Nizikin and I click on Pirkei Avot, and now I'm in Pirkei Avot. And, um, but let's say what I really wanted was, I didn't want the first chapter. Let's say that I wanted um, the third chapter. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put it back in bilingual. It just makes me more comfortable, but you could be in whatever you like. And this is another thing. What's really nice about Safari is everything is pretty standardized. So if you know how to navigate one book in our library, you know how to navigate all books in our library. So we've so far, we've had the search bar, we've had the A Aleph button, and we've had the hamburger. And now here's another important place. And this is in the header right above where the name of the book is. You see the Pirkei vote one up in the top there. If I click on this name, it will open the table of contents for the book. The table of contents of the book has a ton of information and it's a great way to navigate the book. So um, if I wanted to start in the beginning, it went to one and I could just 
you know, skim down. But let's say I wanted to go to chapter three. So here I have the chapters and some, depending on the work, you could have tons and tons of these, but chapter three, I click on chapter three and there I am. So that's a nice way um, to navigate. While I'm in the table of contents, I might as well show you many of the other great things that are in there. It shows me the category, the name of the book. It gives me a little background about the book. Maybe I'm not quite sure what it is. And um, there's nobody, I am sure, because um, that knows all of the books in the library that we have. I know that I've learned a lot from working at Safaria of books that I had never heard of. So we have a little explanation. Um, we have the chapters. Also here, you can navigate to the commentaries. Um, and then here we have versions because sometimes we have more than one version, more than one Hebrew version, more than one English version, and you can choose which version that you like. And the rest is a little bit is the more advanced class. So I'm going to just leave it at that. If I X out on the top left, I close the table of contents and I'm back in the book. Um, oh, that was a lot that I just, uh, rattled through. So um, I'm going to stop. And if Hava, if there have been any questions in the chat, I'll take those now just for what we've covered. Yeah, so we've had a couple questions. Um, can you touch on um, bookmarking a text? Sure. So bookmarking, and I haven't talked yet about having a Safari account, but um, Safari accounts are free. They take about two minutes to sign up for. You, put a, you enter an email address and a password, and it gives you all of the features. Now, everything that I've done so far, you can do without having a, um, an account, but we encourage you to have an account, but you could have done that all without. But to, um, to do some of the things like make source sheets and some of the other things, you do need to have an account. Um, if I wanted to bookmark this, so that means I want to be able to easily get it. First of all, it will remember it. If I close it and I come back to it later, it will remember it. But the star next to the A Aleph, the left of the A Aleph is a star. And if I click the star, it tells me, told me what I was doing. I'll do that again. I can remove it. I can unbookmark it. Now, if I hover over it, you can see it says save Pirkei vote three. So it tells me exactly what I'm saving. But let's say I don't want to save at the chapter level. Let's say... I want to save right here. I click on it and open the sidebar. And now if I press, look at now, now when I hover, it says save Pirkei Avot 3.3. So now it's getting very specific. So again, if you want to get it down to the, the, uh, the, the Mishnah level or down to the verse level, down to a part, you have to have the resource panel open on the side. If you want to do the full chapter, you don't need to. I'm going to click it. And now I'm going to show you where I find it. So I'm going to click on the hamburger to go to the library page. And on the library page on the top, I have saved. And I'm going to click on that. And there you see, I just saved that Pirkei Avot 3.3. And if I click on that, then there I am right back there. OK? Great. And we had another question just wanting to clarify if you wanted to look at commentaries and we saw that you could open a commentary in another panel but what if i wanted to look at two different commentaries of the same text side by side in different panels okay so um so the way i would do that this is this is kind of getting to the advanced but we'll do it i'll do it quickly um you can have any two texts next to each other so i'm going to put this one so if i click on it to open the resource panel. Again, there's tons of stuff in the resource panel. We're going to cover some of it, not all of it. Uh, we have a FAQ page about the resource panel, so you could go through every single thing. If I click other text, now I have a whole other library page. And so let's say I wanted, I, I'm not going to go and look through for another commentary, but this all works the same way. Um, I can put anything that I want doesn't even have to be linked to it. I could put anything I want side by side. So if I wanted to do that, what I would do is I would, um, if I don't do what you said about putting two, having the text open and two commentaries side by side, I would open the text. I would do the commentary the way I showed you before. And then on that second commentary, I would click to open the resource page. And there I would open um, 
at a resource panel, then I would open uh, uh, the second one and then they would be in full, in, in the full library view side by side. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. Um, so we were talking about finding a text that we know that we're looking for, but what about you wanna find something that you don't even know what you're looking for? Um, and we have a really exciting new feature that I think um, that I think that you'll like. I love it. You can get lost in it because um, you just discover so many things. So what I'm going to do is it's going to start in the there's of course a few ways. There's always a few ways to get to things. I'm going to show you one way and then I'll show you other ways. So I'm going to start in the search bar in the top left and I'm going to say that well we just started the month of Tammuz, and I know that the fast day, the 17th of Tammuz is coming up, and I'd like to see what I can learn about it. So I'm gonna type in the, type in the, in the um, search bar, I'm gonna type 17 Tammuz, and you can see there's a drop-down menu. Um, in the drop-down menu, I'm gonna actually point out a few things before I click on the one that we're gonna do. Um, the hashtag means that that's a topic page. That's what we're gonna click on in a minute. Um, but you notice other things came up, just, you know, whatever. Um, a book icon means that you're opening a book. The, uh, I guess that's a quill, the quill icon means that that's an author. So if you want to find out about the author, but we're going to go to the um, hashtag, which is going to take us to the topics page. And now we have this wonderful page um, that our engineers have just made available for us. And it has the name of it, and it has sources, and it has sheets. So we'll start with sources. And here we'll have, these are starting with the most relevant, meaning these appear in most places when you're talking about the 17th of Tammuz. So it either appears most on people's sheets, or also um, it appears in, um, we've used different encyclopedias, it's appeared there. So it gets to the real core of the topic from the beginning to less, uh, to a little more esoteric as we go down. It also, if you're on the English site, it also will prefer texts that have a translation. If you're on the Hebrew site, it's gonna, uh, it's not gonna care about that. Okay, so we start with a text from the Talmud that talks about the 17th of Tammuz and another one, and we keep going down and you see these are all translated. Then we have something from the Jerusalem Talmud, which right now we don't have a translation, but we hope that, that we'll be able to make that available in the future. And these are other texts that do not have a translation, but you can keep going and seeing texts. It's going to do it by the most relevant, both with having a translation and with how often it appears. But I can filter it. If you see the filter button in the top right, I can also sort it chronologically, and this will put will rearrange them so it's the order that the book was written. So um, if I was doing something else, this one doesn't have so much in translation, but some sometimes, oh, excuse me, um, sometimes, sorry, um, sometimes you are, um, sometimes you're doing something, you want to trace the history of something as it starts maybe in the Torah and then ends up in the Talmud and then you wanna see later codes, chronological would help you for that. Um, you also have another, you could do have a second search uh, topic here. So it'd be 17th of Tammuz that also has something else. Uh, if I click on sheets, it will give me source sheets that have been tagged 17th of Tammuz. And these are source sheets that people have made public to all Safari users, when a person makes a source sheet, it defaults to, to being unlisted and a person has a choice to make it listed. And it's wonderful because you can see all kinds of, you see the people who wrote them. Um, here's one, what is the 17th of Tammuz about? So maybe I was wondering about the 17th of Tammuz. I put it in the search bar. I got to the, the um, topics page and now I get to a sheet. If I click on it, I get to a source sheet that, uh, oh, I made everything very big. Um, so I get to a source sheet that is going to explain to me with, with sources and all kinds of things. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the 
sheet. So I have sources and sheets and on the side I have related topics. So the 17th of Tammuz is one of the minor fasts along with the 10th of Tevet. So they're thinking maybe if you're interested in 17th of Tammuz, maybe you're interested in 10th of Tevet, maybe you're interested in fasting in general or Tisha B'Av or any of these things. And so you can see how one could really uh, dive in deep into different topics and you can get all swept up and you can also, you see the star every place you have, you can save these source sheets, you can save the sources by using the star. If you don't have time to look into them deeply now, you can go and look later on. So this is a great way to find resources that you didn't maybe even know existed. Um, so we got there again by typing in the search bar and looking for the hashtag, hashtag whatever it is that I type. But there's another way to do it. We're going to go to the hamburger, which is going to take us to the library page. We've already talked about the saved. Also, if you're logged in, you can see your reading history. We have the text. I'm going to skip over this for a second. And here we have the topics. So um, here's another way I could say, oh, I'm interested in something maybe about prayer. And now I have different choices. I want about Matovu. I can click on that and I can get to a topics page. I also can, if I click more and if I do all topics, this is another place I have a, a search. I can also search here, put anything I want in the search bar. We have thousands of topics pages. So um, who knows what you're going to find. Um, and you can also, you can see how many topics we have. You can just keep searching and searching till you find something that you're really, really interested in. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you on our library page, because I skipped over it, but it's also a great way to get to the text that you, that you would like to study, and that's our calendar. This also is on the app, um, and we have a link right um, for Parshada Shavua, um, this, the, my computer knows that I'm in Israel, so it's giving me the, the Torah portion in Israel, and the Haftorah, and Daf Yomi, the, the, the page of Talmud for the day. You can just click on it, and it'll open up the, you don't have to remember what day you're on. Um, 929, which is a program where you learn a, where people study a chapter of the Bible, which there are 929 chapters of the Bible, that you do a chapter a day, actually you do five a week. Um, a daily mission, these are different calendars that are popular that people use for studying on a regular basis and you can get to that from the library page as well. So all kinds of ways to find text to study on Safaria. Um, so I will uh, take a break again if there are questions. I have a question. Uh, where do you download this from to, so that it can be on your computer rather than in an app? Okay, so on the app, you can download the offline library. On the website, we do not have an easy way to do it. We basically are an online um, resource. And you can see why the online is, uh, you know, is, is just, so much richer when you have all these connections. You can uh, download a particular text. Um, so that was on the table of contents of the particular work and you can look in our FAQs, it'll tell you how to do that. You can download a particular text, but it, it's not the whole, you, there isn't a downloading the whole library. You can do it on the app, which is good for like, uh, you know, if you're in an airplane or if you don't have internet access, you can access on your phone the library. You also, if you don't want to use all of your memory, you can um, just download the parts, the sections, the categories that you like. So you might want to download liturgy, which would be all of them. By the way, liturgy would have our Sidurim. Um, you can you could download, maybe I just want a couple of the, of the categories, you can do that. Um, we're going to ask you if you could have the questions, if you could put them in the chat that would be helpful and then Chava will ask the questions. Great, um, so I'm seeing a couple more questions. One is, um, do we have video lectures online? So we don't actually do um, so much of our own content, but we have these books available. You can find other users created source sheets 
Um, some of them might have video lectures embedded within those source sheets. Um, but we are basically the library and not the um, necessarily the classroom. Um, and a couple more questions. Um, Rachel, if you can just scroll to the top of that page there. If you are on the library page, this is exactly where you will see saved and history. Um, and you have to be logged in in order to do this. So if you don't have an account on Safari and you don't, and you're not logged in, your history will not be saved here and you won't be able to save text. So make sure that you are uh, signing up for a free account on Safari to use all of the features. And here you can see, these are all the texts. It tells you how long, these are what we've been using throughout this webinar. Here are them. And then further down, are you know what we were doing what I was doing or some whoever was on this account was doing a few hours ago um, it's nice to see what you were what you were learning um, and the no, and it's also nice on the side you see the color coded uh, for the section so I can see that I have a nice mix uh, although this wasn't my learning this was just my showing you um, and yes, everyone will be able to access the recording of this webinar afterwards. We'll be sending that out in an email tomorrow, along with the source sheet um, that is an outline of what this is. You can find more information on how to do things in our FAQs. You'll find a link for that in the source sheet for this webinar. Um, and some of those have videos, pictures, and um, GIFs that will help you learn how to do things on Safari. On our YouTube channel, you can also see other previous webinars we've done. Um, and yeah, so you can always learn more that way. If you still have questions, you can always email us at hello at safaria.org. Um, and then one last question. Um, is how do you sign up for an account? So if you're on the English site, it is in the top right corner. On Rachel's screen, you'll see the little Safari logo. That's the account she's logged into. But if you're not logged in, that's where it will say log in or sign up. Um, and for our YouTube, if you go into YouTube and search for Safari, you will find um, that it says Safari in English and Hebrew. And that is our YouTube channel. All right, I think we're ready to. Okay, move well, on. I'm excited about the next part. Now I'm going to show you sheets, but I, again, I'm not showing you how to make them. That is another time, but I'm going to show you what they are since we've been talking about them and so that you can see what they are. So here is a sheet. Um, a sheet is, is, um, is a, is, user created content, different Safari users, anybody who has an account can, can create a sheet. Again, they can share it with everybody, make it listed so people can find it in those searches and it comes up in the resource panel or they can keep it to themselves and not do it. If you keep it to yourself, you can still share it with people that you, like your own people, you could decide. Um, it's a collection of sources from our library, outside text, media, and comment. And they're dynamic, at, which means that they can always be edited, which is a great thing. I know that uh, what the sheet that I make today is not going to necessarily be the sheet that I want um, in a month or two months from now. Hopefully, I learned something and maybe I have something to add to it or something to change. You can always change them. They can be collaborative. Uh, depending on how I set my settings, I could have other people um, like if I'm teaching something, I could have other people comment or my family did a, this year when we weren't together for Pesach, we have a wonderful um, Haggadah template that I sent to all of our family members and asked people to add to it. So the little kids added pictures and the older people added memories and comments. And if people wanted to, they could print it out and we could all have our own Haggadah, so they can be collaborative and they can be made, they can be listed so that they become part of the Safari library. So the library is the traditional, the texts that we have, but it also is the source sheets. Um, so I want to show you some examples. This one is just a pretty straightforward. You notice that you can add images, you can play around with the color. Um, another thing about the source sheets, and again, it's not like any piece of paper source sheet you've ever had. 
uh, although you can print them out, but you lose many of these aspects of it. Um, but you are always connected to the library. So here's our source. And if I click on the uh, citation here, it's linked. And now I have my source sheet still here, but maybe you notice that I put here, I, I didn't put the whole source. There's dot, dot, dot in the beginning and there's dot, dot, dot in the end. And maybe I wanna see the whole thing. And here I have it, I have it right next to me. And maybe I'm interested in a commentary on it. I can click in another panel, you know how it works. Um, it's great, it's, you're, you're always connected to the library and that is super special and a reason to have it online. Um, so this is just a very basic, uh, called a narrative uh, source sheet because this is something that somebody, it's not just sources, this is something that somebody could learn with on their own. And we love it when people write sheets like this because people who are searching to learn something, um, it's, it's, it's like a present because you can follow somebody else's learning this way. Um, you asked about videos. So here is a sheet that we made when we, we have um, Nechama Leibowitz's Gilia Note, her source, she was the original source sheet maker. And we're so honored to have her, uh, her source sheets on our site. Um, and when we were launching that, we wanted to um, have a sheet about more Nechama. And um, so this one has an image and it has, um, has some text that we wrote. This one actually doesn't have anything from our library. Um, it has a picture of the original Gilio note, um, but it also has a video. And this is the easiest thing to do to add to a source sheet. And what's really nice is when I, I'll click on it in a second, um, you won't really hear it, but I'll, I'll click on the, to play it. You stay within the sheet. It doesn't take you outside. So if you were doing, like let's say somebody videoed their shiur, their class, and they wanted to put the text that go with it, it could be playing and your students or you or whoever could be looking at the text. So I'll click on it. Okay, and, the, and it plays right in the sheet. So um, it also, it can be hyperlinked. Here's a, a link, I'm not gonna click, it's gonna go to someplace else. Um, all kinds of things that you can do with a sheet. Here is, um, well, I have another sheet here somewhere. Or, or maybe I don't. Um, I did have one. Okay, so we're just gonna look at those two, but you can also put outside texts. Um, we actually have that here. We have, um, this is from Times of Israel. I added that as an outside text. So you can have all of these things on your sheets. Now, how do you find the sheets? Um, let's go and I will, don't know what this is. Here we go. Okay, so um, where do you find sheets in the library? So these are for the ones that are listed. I'm gonna click on, actually, I'm gonna go to something that I know has, no, no I'll click here. Um, and I, in the resource panel, uh, you'll see on the side, the second one down is sheets. And in parentheses, it has a six, which I think we all know now. That means there are six sheets that have used this text. So I can click on sheets and now I see all of the sheets and this person, the first one, Olivia Friedman, she tagged her sheets, which is really super helpful because now I know what she did with the sheet. What are some of the topics? Superstitions, Ayin Hara. Um, so all of that, these ones they didn't, but it's still good. And I could open up any of these. I'll open up Olivia Friedman's. And here it takes me right to the source, but if I go up to the beginning, I can see her whole sheet and I can see that it's a long sheet. I can go all the way up and here is her, her sheet. And oh, this is a great one. Um, it's based on sources combined, which is, oh, by Rabbi Turchiner, who's actually a good friend of mine. Um, so, it has a link here to a scene from Fiddler on the Roof and she put in, this is her outside text and she has questions and she's, this would be, I'm sure a fascinating sheet to, to look at. Um, if I was doing this now and I, let's say I'm in the middle of a webinar and I say, oh, you know what? I've never seen this sheet. I love it. I wanna come back and look at it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bookmark it because I'll be looking at this one later. Um, 
Okay, so that's how I find them in the, in the sidebar, in the resource uh, panel. Um, the other thing that's in there, I'm gonna show you something else. I'm gonna put brachot. Um, no, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, I could do it that way. I would like to look in Talmud, in brachot. I'm gonna go, it took me to the table of contents. I wanna go to 2A. This is the very beginning. I'm gonna click on it. And I have, there are 19 sheets, but down below there are web pages. And this is another place to find wonderful material that you might be interested in learning. So I'm gonna click on web pages. There's 138 of them. So we have something called the Torah, the Linker. And these are people who have websites and they have put our Linker on their website, which means that they, when people are reading their posts on their websites um, and they're quoting text, they can click from there right into Safaria, which is a wonderful thing. But we also have it going reverse. So now I'm reading here and I want to know a little bit more. I want to learn something. I can go to the web pages and I see all of these different websites, which really are a variety, like My Jewish Learning is a more of a beginner website, it has wonderful information. They have two uh, pages that use this, this piece. I could do the virtual Beit Midrash, that's gonna be a little more advanced. There are some Hebrew ones. I'm gonna do Torah in Motion, just to keep the Toronto theme going. And, um, and here I can see that um, the person who writes Torah in Motion, Rabbi J. Kelman, he wrote something that used this text. And here you can see how he links on his site. If I click that, I would go back into our library. And here I get some learning that I wouldn't have found maybe otherwise, but I found it through our library. So our library just keeps expanding. We have the book, we have the source sheets, and now we even have web pages um, that can be a source of learning for people. I'm gonna take one more stop before I have the end. I've gotta be doing a few more things. So if we have questions on the sheets, um, I'll, I'll take them from Chava, if that's okay. All right, I'm not seeing any um, questions in here about source sheets so far. As, if anyone has one, please feel free to drop it into the chat. Um, okay, then I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. Great, so we've talked about um, an account, about why odd, uh, we talked about how to do it, um, why you would want it, uh, because then you can use all of the wonderful features that we have. So you can create sheets, you can track your learning, you can save text, you can read, you can view your reading history. And another thing that you can do is you can take notes and these are private. So I'm gonna click this. Let's say I'd like to write a note on uh, about this. Uh, maybe I want to remind myself something, I learned something. Uh, in the resource panel, I click on notes and I write my note and I press add to note, add note. And then the next time that I am in this, uh, in this text, then here I would have in parentheses one note. Maybe I learned it again another time and learned something else. I could go back, I could put another note and then I would have two notes. Um, it's nice if, if, you're, if children or grandchildren are learning on Safari, maybe they're using it in school, they could write uh, something that they learned in third grade and then you, know, you come back to these texts and maybe where they're in seventh grade, they learn something else and they can put that and you can see your growth. Uh, but everybody could see their growth by keeping uh, notes. There's tons of things you can do with notes. Um, I would like to show you, let's see, of course it's right underneath. Hmm. Rachel, okay. just before we move on, could you um, just go in and quickly just add in a quick note so we sure. can see what that looks like? Yeah, absolutely. So here is my note. I'm going to add the note and now I will show you what that looks like. So now you can see that I have next to the notes on the right hand side, there's one um, in there and then I click on it and you see on the bottom here, here is my note. If I hover, I have a little pencil, which means I can edit. Um, I could edit my note, um, save it and cancel, or I could delete my note. I'm actually gonna delete my note, if you don't mind, uh, because this is a shared 
uh, account, it will always ask you to make sure that you want to, so you won't delete something that you didn't. And now you'll see that there's no note here. Um, this is something that you could only do on the website. You cannot do notes on the app. So, going to do it. There it is. <laughs> um, so if you're logged in, if you're logged in, this is your web page. This is your home page. Uh, all kinds of great things. Another way to find interesting material that you might not have found updates and new texts and all kinds of things. I'd like to look on the right hand side. You have also the library. This is another way that you can do that. You can make a sheet from here. You can sign up for the newsletter from here. You can uh, uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, right here from the homepage. Um, you can support Safaria. Safaria is a nonprofit and we rely on support of foundations and individual donors. You can click here to make a donation. We have several choices. We have one-time donations. We have a sustainer program where people uh, make a pledge of a certain amount, whatever amount they want uh, monthly. And we also have day sponsors. You can sponsor a day of learning and your name will go on with your message will go on the library page, which is a great way to, uh, to mark a, a simcha, to honor the memory of somebody. Um, and then teach with Safari. Of this I'm going to click. Oh, before I click on that, I'll go to here also. It's also on the source sheet that I sent, that I put with this and also here you are, you can get the free mobile apps, Android and iOS. I'd like to click on the Teach with Safaria. We do have a special teacher section. We work a lot with teachers to help you to use this in your teaching. Um, here we have, this is a different newsletter. This is to get on as an educator so that you'll get an educator newsletter um, from our chief learning officer, Sarah Walkenfeld. We have opportunities for professional development. We have a free online Safari training course. We have a blog. Um, we have a few features on source sheets that are just, that are really made for teachers. Anybody could use them, but really only teachers would want to. So we have explanations of those um, and all kinds of special teacher things. Um, so I think I've covered everything that I get to show you uh, one more thing at the end, which I'm going to get to again on the hamburger here on the left, top left. If you go to the footer, uh, um, we have all kinds of other things. We have a link to those FAQs, which I told you about, that uh, will explain a lot of the things that we've done here and more. Um, we can, we have a little what is Safari if you'd like to know more. Um, we have a lot of things. If you are a tech person, if you are a programmer, um, we have all kinds of things. We are open source, so people can use our API. They can develop their own things. Um, all of that is here, but I would like to click on visualizations, which is under tools at the bottom. And this is just a really fun, great thing that you can do when you've digitized your text. Uh, then you can reconfigure it and do all kinds of things. And our engineers and other people love to come up with ideas of what to do. I'm going to show you, we have several of them, but I'm going to show you our most popular. This is the Link Explorer. And if I click on it, what they have done is they have taken, and actually it started out just Tanakh and Talmud. And now there's many more books that they're comparing. So they put on the top every, every chapter, every book of the Tanakh. And on the bottom, we have every uh, Masechet of the Talmud. And every one of these lines is a verse, is a connection where one, well, well, it has to be the Talmud is quoting the Tanakh. Um, why do we want to do this? It's really interesting to see, look at how much from the Torah is here in the blue and the Talmud quotes the Torah the most. But I even could go to, let's say I want to look at um, Rosh Hashanah. So I go to the bottom, it's hard I know to see, but when you do it, you can make it bigger. 
um, I'm going to click on Rosh Hashanah. So now I'm going to have Rosh Hashanah on the bottom. And I could say to myself, hmm, I wonder what, what texts from the Tanakh are quoted in Masechet Rosh Hashanah. And so I notice here that there's a lot of gray sheets, which makes sense. It's the new year. It's the beginning of the year, um, beginning of creation. And um, anyway, I'd be interested in knowing what this is. This is connecting to, um, to uh, I think it's to like Chronicles, to Ezra. Uh, so anything I could do, I could click on one of these. Here's a connection to Ezra. Everyone, if I click on it, it will take it to me in the, in the text. So um, I don't know why it's not doing that. Uh, it's a little big, but, um, and then I can see if I click on it, we know what will be, this is Rosh Hashanah. We know that we'll have Ezra over here because that's, the, that's a link. And then I can see them together. So it's just a really fun thing. That's another way that one can spend a lot of time uh, learning some Torah on Safari. Um, I think that's what we had planned. If there are people who would like to stay on and ask questions, I appreciate you spending some time with us. And um, if you have questions, you can write um, hello at safaria.org. We're always happy to answer your questions, to hear from you. I know it's a lot to absorb, so we'll let it sink in and play around with it. That's really the way that you learn. Um, play around with it and if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, are there any last questions before we end the webinar? All right, I hope that you all learned something new today um, and hopefully are able to more easily navigate the site. Um, and we will see you next time. Keep an eye out in your email for uh, the next set of webinars we'll be offering.